All right, so today we are going to do 4.5, okay? And um, listen to me, people, if you do not know how to factor, you will not pass two tests. One is a 50-point test that you'll have on Tuesday of next week. It will be a timed test. Don't panic. Don't go, oh, my gosh, it's time. I'm not going to get finished. People, I can work this test in three minutes. I'm going to give you like 12 to 15, okay? So normally what you do is however long it takes a teacher, you multiply by that by three, and that's how long you give your kids, okay? That's the standard. So I'm giving you more than that. You will all finish it unless you don't know how to do it. It will just be a 50-point test, okay? And the big test is still a ways away, so we're not going to talk about it yet. All right, so um, we're moving a little bit in a different direction, okay? For today it will be, and then Monday it will kind of pick back up. So solve quadratic equations by finding square roots. So what does quadratic mean? Uh, four. What? What does it have? It's an x squared. It has an x squared. Okay? It has an x squared. So, I was on the video. <laughs> so we have an equation that has an x squared. Y'all been solving them, okay? But I'm going to show you a little different way to do it. So before we talk about that, I want to talk about what I consider base knowledge <coughs> for you. This is stuff that I think you should already know, okay? And if you don't already know, I'm telling you, you better know now. You better learn it, okay? In the next couple of days, you need to know this. All right, so you need to be able to list the squares to 15. Okay? You need to be able to list the squares to 15. So we're going to do it out loud. Everybody's going to say them. Does everybody understand? We're all participating. Okay? So what is 2 squared? 4. 3 squared? 4 squared? 5. 6. 7. 8. 64. Nine, eight, 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 eight,
So you'll just kind of learn it. Okay, what is time again? Huh? 216, what is that? Six, Six cubed. Okay. All right. I don't ask you to learn the fourth powers because really you already know them. Okay? Look, look. Oh, yeah. 15 of these, actually it's only 14 because we don't do one. And there's only, I only asked you to do four of these. Okay? So here's the fourth powers. Let's do two to the four. Okay, here's what you do. You square it, and then you square it again. So square two, and what do you get? Four. Four, and we'll square four. Sixteen. So two to the fourth is sixteen. Do you see why I don't make you remember it? If you, if you know these, you're going to know these. Um, what about three? Three to the fourth. What's three squared? Nine. Nine squared? Eighty-one. There you go. So I don't make you memorize those, because those are easy for us to figure them out. I do make you do fifth powers. One of them. Two to the fifth is 32. That one pops up a whole lot. Okay? So that one pops up a whole lot. So um, you can need to know that. All right. So here we go. This is the stuff you need to know, guys. If you don't know this, you need to learn it. Um, so let's talk about some other stuff I think you already know. Two to the third equals what? Eight. Okay? So anybody know what this part of that problem is called? The base, yes. Okay, the base. You're going to get this one, Michael. What is this little number right here called? That's the exponent. Very good. All right? And this whole entire thing all together, two to the third, that is called a power. Okay? Now we're going to go backwards. The cube root of eight is two. Okay? The cube root of eight is two. Now, notice where that little number is. He's right inside that little V. He is not on this little stick and he's not on the top. He's inside, in between. All right? So, let's see. Um, anybody know what that little number is called? I forgot. A coefficient. No. Nope. The N index. Yeah. He's an index number. number. And he's telling you what route you're taking. Okay? He is an index number, and he's telling you what route you're taking. Notice that a lot of the times you don't see an index number, all right? For instance, if I said, what's the square root of 4? Y'all would all say 2. two. I didn't put a 2 in there, but if you don't have a number in there, it's understood to be a square root. If you take any other root other than a square root, you have to put the index number in there, okay? Now, what about this? What about that little symbol right there? What's that called? A square root symbol. No. Um, radical. Yeah, he's called a radical. He's called a radical. All right? Now, here is, um, here's a different, you probably don't know this one, but this eight right here, the number underneath the radical, is called the radicand. <laughs> He's called the radicand. It has an e, a D on the end of it. Okay? All right. So why are we doing all this? What's this about? Why? Why or why? So we know the okay. vocabulary. So we'll know the vocabulary. That's exactly right. When I start using those words, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? So what if you got a problem like this? X squared minus 9 equals 0. We know how to solve this problem, don't we? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. What's this called right here? A difference of two perfect squares. Difference of two perfect squares. Now, y'all listen to me. Much to some of y'all's amazement, that does not factor into x minus 3 quantity squared. It factors into conjugates. Okay? What are they? X, x minus 3 and x plus 3. Very good. Conjugates. And then we set each one of these factors equal to 0. And we solve for x. x is negative 3, and x is positive 3. Do you agree? 
And then we learned how to even skip this step. We said if the factor is x plus 3, then the root, the 0, the answer, the solution, the x-intercept, all those things are the same thing, is negative 3. If it's x minus 3, then the 0 is positive 3. Okay, I'm going to show you another way to work it. Are you with me? All right, so I'm going to take that same problem, x squared minus 9 equals 0. Can I add 9 to both sides? Okay. Yeah. You can take an equation. You can do anything you want to to it, as long as what you do to one side, you do to the other. So over here, the 9 will go away, and over here, 0 plus 9 is 9. Now can I solve for x by doing what? Taking the square root of each other. Taking the square root. Okay, now before I do that, I'm going to ask you a question. Remember yesterday, we talked about Freddie Gauss, that famous mathematician that discovered the fundamental theorem of algebra? which said, how many answers should this guy have? Two. two. The highest exponent in an equation is going to tell you how many solutions he has. Okay? So the square root of x squared is x. What's the square root of 9? Three. Three. Is that wrong? Three's right, but i got to have two answers. Uh, Negative three. Yeah. What's three times three? Nine. What's negative three times negative three? Nine. Negative three. This is the way we write it. Plus or minus three. Plus or minus three. Same answer we got here, guys. Plus or minus three. All right. So here's something you need to know. Okay. So write this in your notebook. Store it. Let's write it in a nice bright color. Any time. You're solving an equation and you take a square root. Anytime you're solving an equation and you take a square root, you must put a plus or minus. If you don't, you're throwing away one answer, okay? You're throwing away an answer and then you're only going to get half the problem right, all right? If you said the square root of 9 is 3, I'll be like, oh, if it was four point problem, minus 2, what about negative 3, okay? So you got to remember that. It's only for squares. All right, so here we go. Properties of radicals. There's two properties, I mean, there's only two of them, so I don't need much room. Remember, radicals, that's that little square root symbol, okay? Properties of radicals. There are two of them. The first one says, this, if I have the square root of A and I multiply it by the square root of B, it is equal to the square root of A times B. Now, I'm going to take this little equal sign, I'm going to make him a little bit longer, and I'm going to put an arrow on both ends. And what that means is that I can take something like this, and I can rewrite it as 2. Like I could say, the square root of 6 is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. You see what I'm saying? Or I could say, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 6. So it goes both ways. There's one more. It says the square root of A over the square root of B. It's talking about fractions. Still goes both ways. Is equal to the square root of A over B. So let's try some problems. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify some radicals. Okay? We are going to simplify some radicals. So simplifying radicals. Now the ones we're going to start out with are all square roots. So um, obviously I'm thinking that you know the perfect squares. Um, this should be a a refresher course. You did this in, in um, geometry, so you did it last year. Uh, so let's do the square root of 80. Okay, the square root of 80. Now listen, there are lots of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you what I think is the best way to do it. Okay, in Algebra 1, you learned to make a factor tree, right? People, we ain't making no factor tree. Okay? That's ridiculous. It takes way too long. In Algebra 1, that's the way we teach it because it makes kids understand what's going on. But
But in Algebra 2, you should already understand, so I'm going to show you a better way. Okay, a shorter way, I guess you, I should say. Okay, so here's the thing. I want to find factors of this number. Numbers that divide into 80, we say evenly, without, without a remainder. Okay, so I want to find factors of 80. But the only numbers I care about are perfect squares. If it's not a perfect square, I don't care. Okay, do I care that 2 is a factor of 80? Why not? It's not a perfect square, okay? So one thing that'll make this easier is if I go down the side of my paper and I list the perfect squares, okay? So let's do it. Two squared. Four. Four. Three squared. Nine. Come on, guys, everybody. Four squared. Six. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Eight. Ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, awesome, 15, very good. So these are the only numbers that I care about. If one of these numbers divides into my radican, then that makes me happy and that's useful to me. But if it's not one of these numbers, I don't really care. Okay, so if you don't know one, then you just start at the top. Be organized, people. Don't go guessing. Okay, you start at the top. Does 4 go into 80 evenly? Is 4 a factor of 80? Yes. Yes. Y'all, listen, here's a secret. If 4 works a lot of the time, 16 will work also. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work it with 4, and then I'm going to show you about 16. Okay, 4 times what is 80? 20. This is the only time you're going to see me write it like this, okay? So I'm going to write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 20, okay? What is the square root of 4? 2. When I take its square root, the radical goes away. Do you agree with that? Okay, so it's 2 square root of 20. Do you agree? Now, is there a perfect square that's inside that 20? That's a factor of 20. Yeah. 2 is not a perfect square. I mean, uh, four, 4 again. 4 times 5. Now, this is the way I show my work. I don't write it like this. I do it like this. I always put the perfect square first because he's the number I will work on. And I always put the other number last. He's the number that will be left under the radical. Okay? What is the square root of 4? 2. Since I took its square root, it goes on the outside. On the outside. But there's already a number out there. That's exactly right. We're multiplying it. And the reason is because, y'all, this is 2 times the square root of 20. What's 2 times 2? 4. 4. And what stays underneath? The 5. Okay, so what happens if you don't do it that way? Well, watch. What if you listened and you said, oh, Miss Davis said if 4 works, 16 probably works. Okay? So, here's y'all, look, if you don't want to divide 16 into 80, then kind of cheat and do it this way. What can you multiply 6 by and you get something that ends at a 0? 5. 5. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry your 3. 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 plus 3 is 80. So 5 works. So let's rewrite this as 16 times 5. What is the square root of 16? When I took its square root, it goes outside the radical, and the 5 stays underneath same thing we got down there. Okay? Okay. So, listen, here's the deal. You remember back when you did fractions in the, like, fifth and sixth grade, and you had to reduce those gigantic numbers? And sometimes you would have to reduce one, like, six or seven times, and then sometimes you got lucky, and you guessed the big number, and you only had to do it once? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, people. You can do it a bunch of times. It doesn't matter. Just as long as the number underneath the radical that's left has no perfect square that will divide into it. All right, are you ready? Here we go. B, the square root of 27. It's yours, you do it. The square root of 27. I only care if it has a perfect square that is a factor of it. Okay, what's a perfect square that's a factor of 27? Nine. Nine. Nine times three. People, if you don't know your multiplication facts, you're going to struggle on this one. Okay, what's the square root of nine? Four. 
Since I took it square root, it goes outside, outside and the other one stays underneath. So there's my answer. Okay? I can't check these on the calculator. I'm going to show you how to do it. You're not going to have a calculator, so it really won't matter. But if you were taking another type of test, you might. Okay? So here's the way you would check it on the calculator. Um, the square root of 27 is equal to this. Now, 3 times the square root of 3 should be exactly the same. And it is. Now, will my calculator tell me if it's fully simplified? No. No. He's only going to tell you if what you're saying it's equal to, it's equivalent to. All right? Here's your next one. Oh, this is a hard one. The square root of 98. being organized. Okay? Remember what I said about being organized. Y'all look, 98's not easy to find something, is it? Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say 4. Does 4 go into 98? Well, 4 goes into 9 two times with 1 left over. Will 4 go into 18? No. So 4 doesn't work. Will 9 go into 98? No. What about 16? Can I multiply 6 by something and get an 8? A three? What's three times sixteen? Forty-eight. Yeah, that's forty-eight. That's not enough. Well, what about eight? Eight times sixteen is forty-eight. Okay? And then when you carry the four, that makes a one twenty-eight. So that's too much. Sixteen won't work. What about twenty-five? No. Thirty-six? Oh, what about a three? Three times six is eighteen. Carry your one. That makes it one oh eight. So thirty-six. What about forty-nine? Oh, he goes in there twice. 49 times 2. What is the square root of 49? Seven. So the 7 goes outside and the 2 goes underneath. Is everybody okay? Mm -hmm. All right, here's your next one. The square root of 32. The square root of 32. So this is one of those, if you were listening to me, I can make your life easier, right? Because just four go into 32. Yeah. So did you try 16? Yes. It's 16 times what? Two. And what is the square root of 16? Four. So the four goes outside and the two stays underneath. All right, let's do another one. The square root of 10 times the square root of 15. All right? Now, let me tell you the rule, guys. The rule is, before you multiply these two things, you should really simplify them. Okay? If you can simplify that radical, you always should do that before you multiply. Can you simplify 10? Yes. No. No. 4 doesn't go into it, 9 doesn't go into it, and then we're too big. Okay? What about 14? Can I simplify that? No. No. So now I'm stuck. I just got to do it. Um, what is 10 times 15? Okay, so now look, what count, what number is in here and in here? <coughs> five. Yeah, a five here and a five here. So I got two fives. That's twenty-five. Oh, this is like a dollar fifty. How many quarters are in a dollar fifty? Six of them. What's the square root of twenty-five? Five. Since I took its square root, it goes outside the radical, and the six stays underneath. All right. I got two more. We're going to see who was listening. The square root of 8 times the square root of 28. The square root of 8 times the square root of 28.
answer? Anybody multiply 8 times 28? No, that's not the best way to do it, okay? Remember how I said simplify first? Because when you multiply 8 times 28, what do you get, 224 or something? And nobody knows, like, what goes into 224 evenly, okay? So what about 8? Tell me a perfect square that's a factor of 8. 4, four. four, four. times 2. What is the square root of 4? 2. And, what's, and so I'll leave a 2 underneath. What's a perfect square that divides into 28? 4 times 7. All right, what's the square root of 4? 3. So the 2 goes outside and the 7 stays underneath. Now, here's the rules when multiplying these. Those outside the house get to play together and those inside the house get to play together. You're going to multiply the coefficients and then you're going to multiply the radicands. Okay? So, those people outside the house, what's 2 times 2? 4. Those people inside the house get to play together, what's 2 times 7? 14. Can I simplify 14? No, no. No. So that's my answer. Anybody got a question? Okay. One more problem like this, and then we're going to write two things down, and then I'm quitting. <laughs> All right. So here we go. You're going to like this problem. I worked it wrong the second period because nobody told me I wrote it down wrong. But anyway. And they never even caught it. They just went with it. So the square root of 3 halves times the square root of 18 over 9, times the square root of 64 over 48. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this. Guys, are all of these under the same type of radical? Are they all square roots? Mm -hmm. So that means it's just like they're all together, under one. Do y'all know how to cross cancel fractions? Mm -hmm. I need to. I hope so. It's like a fifth grade skill. All right. So is there any special order you have to go in? No, you can just start with whatever pulls at your heart. I like, I like this one. Two goes into 18 nine times. What's nine over nine? One. one. What's the square root of one? One. Boom, you're out. Okay. Three goes into 48 how many times? Um, no. 16. 16. I was about to say 16. 16. Will 16 go into 64? Yes. How many times? Like four. Three. Four times. What's the square root of four? Two. What? Beautiful. Beautiful. No. Two. That's my answer. Okay. All right, so we're going to write these next things down. They'll be for our Monday's lesson, but we're going to go ahead and get it out of the way. Okay, so star this, write it in a pretty color. Here we go. It is not proper to have a radical in the denominator. Okay? It is not proper to have a radical in the denominator. So every time you end up with a radical in the denominator, you're going to have to get rid of the radical in the denominator. It's not proper to have that, okay? So this is what that's called. It is called rationalized the denominator. All right? Rationalize the denominator. Now, why is that important for me to tell you this? Because y'all remember that worksheet that you did the other day? And you had all these problems that you had to factor and solve. And then at the bottom of the paper, it gave you six problems. And it said, find the zeros by rewriting this equation in intercept form. Do you remember that? And then everybody was like, what? You came up there and I'm like, hey, Miss Davis, I don't know how to do this. I'm like, yes, you do. No, I don't. Like, you just did it on these 12 problems right here. So it was just another way of saying the same thing. The zeros were the answers or solutions that you got, and intercept form was factored form. Okay? So a lot of times, they're not going to say, hey, get the, get the radical out of the denominator. That's not what they're going to say. They're going to say, rationalize the denominator. So you need to know what that means. It means the eliminate the radical... from the denominator. Okay, eliminate 
the radical from the denominator. All right, we'll start Monday, and we'll work some of those problems, then we'll be through with 4.5. Don't forget your test on Tuesday.